on Chatter, Southwest Florida. I am here with the one and only Jeffrey Tamat to the T to the A to the M to the double A. Oh, the two A's are double one A. a. Single, single A, bro. Tamas. Oh. Jeffrey Tamas of Modern Woodman of America. Yes, sir. That's a tongue twister in itself. But thank you for joining us for episode number two on Chatter, Southwest Florida. Jeff, we're going to dig into a little bit about you, young man, since he's bragging on my age. And saying he's a little bit younger than me. But I am, dude. You're the oldest one in this whole studio oh, right like, now. Like four days? It doesn't count. You're still older. You're moaning, moaning about your back and all. I hurt my back. All right, let's not get into. Let's get into it about you. Don't worry about uh, me. All right, tell us. Tell the fans at home. Tell everyone who's watching. And you're, you're sipping out of a FGB mug. I got mine right here too. We just saw them yesterday. They're great people. Man. They Kelly, are. Kelly's awesome. Kelly is a great friend, and she's awesome. Before we get into about you. How is it being in a car with her for 10 hours straight? Let me tell you something. <laughs> I picked up Kelly before we went to uh, young, our Young Life trip, and she came with bags of snacks. Like, of Twix and that's Reese's what I say. Pieces. What kind of like, snacks? I ate like probably 10 pounds of chocolate in, in, a, in about an 8-9 hour car ride. But, cool Ranch Doritos? Oh, there was all types of Doritos and Snickers and Twix and Reese's Pieces. She knows how to take care of someone. Oh my gosh, that's it. Yeah, but she's awesome. She is awesome. All right, Jeff, let's let's get into a little bit about you. All right, cool. What do you do for a living? Let's just talk about that. Let's get that out of the way because this isn't a promotional show, but we want to give you props. Um, right. Tell as, people at home. Right. You know, as far as um, you know, what I do, I'm kind of limited in what I can and can't say. You know, but I would just encourage people to search me out on social media, and they can kind of click around on my pages and. Handle finances for people. I want to keep it real general. On what, what we'll I, do is, on this show here, we're going to post his link up top so you can click and see what he does. But you're in the finance, insurance world. Correct. If, Ab if that's, absolutely. If that's what we can, we can say. Yeah. Just compliance-wise, it's tough what you can say when you have certain guests on in the financial world, a lawyer, right. a doctor. So certain things that we can and cannot say. So we just got to be careful through compliance. So we're going to keep that very generic. But again, I want to get that out there. Right, um, absolutely. So we'll have your link up top here of the Facebook page. And um, they'll be able to check you out. Cool. Um, and I could, I could def definitely say I'm a client as well. Jeff, um, trust him. So um, I can disclose that as well. So yeah, you can disclose whatever you want. And uh, also, I want to go into really quick. Everyone who's watching live, we do break for commercial. But if you're on the live stream here, not watching the replay version, you will see us as the commercial break is happening. So we're just going to get into some banter and just talk or whatever's happening behind the scenes. How long do we have till commercial break? We have probably a solid minute or two going, two so we got two minutes. So Jeff, what we're going to start is we can start now and lead into after the commercial break as well, but I want to get into your faith. All right, First cool, off, man. When did you start, give me a little background about your faith, when you realized you either wanted to get into it, you needed to get into it. Give me the background to it, because we've talked a lot in depth, but I never asked you about it, what led you to it? What was that moment? There's one defining moment, you know, in all of our lives where things happen. Well, it was uh, definitely to the point where um, I had uh, no other uh, resources or options, man. I hit the floor, man. There was nowhere else to go besides death. You know, that's kind of where it was, and, you know, and that's when I, I, I turned to God for help. When you're saying floor, like you're saying, like you legitimately, like. Like le legitimately, about 20 years ago, I was out on the streets, man. Pretty much what you could say, homeless. You know? Um, well, you were telling me a little bit about, again, again, this is live. I didn't, I haven't dug too deep into it. I'm yeah. enthralled. I'm, I'm, I'm just really intrigued by this story behind this. You're homeless. Right. Like, n no home, dude. No no hotel that you're, you're no, hanging out yeah, in. Yeah, no hotel, no bank account. Um, family didn't want to take collect call from me. And so, and you know, I guess we can get into it when we get back a little bit from the commercial break, but really we're all self-made individuals. Mm -hmm. But it's only the people who are successful are the ones that take responsibility for saying I'm a self-made man. You know, and so really I've come from nothing. No to, silver spoon. No, no. <laughs> My father was an immigrant. He came here from Europe in the 60s from Hungary. Um, worked his entire life, broke his back, you know, provided a, a great home for us to grow up in. Um, so he was really, you know, he's, he's still alive and thankful that he was a great father, taught me work ethic, and taught me how to be hospitable to people and always did the right thing by people. So definitely. I'm sure you had the ups and downs too with it, where it comes and goes, it, you know. Um, we're, we're, we're being distracted. This, again, this is our second episode, so I am getting in tune to the the helpers here. Fine. So we're going to break for a commercial break in just a second. We got about 30 seconds. So if you're watching live, hang on. We'll be back in just a second.
joining us. We are back from commercial break here with Jeffrey Tomas of Modern Woodman of America, and we're digging into the story about faith, when he found God, and a little bit about him. So, you, again, i got to hit this, this part of what you said about rock bottom. When you say rock bottom, so you're walking the streets, Pretty sleeping much. in a car, or, or whatever the circumstances. Abandoned houses. Abandoned houses. Um, what caused you to get there? Addictions? Uh, it was just poor life decisions, addictions, hanging out with bad friends. And my father always said that you are who you hang out with. And mm -hmm. I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. And, you know, there's that old adage, if you hang around the barbershop, you're going to get a haircut. That's right. Um, and so it was just, you know, really bad decisions. And I was hanging out with the wrong group of people. And literally, Anthony, only probably can count on one hand how many friends I have left that are alive today from where I grew up in New York. I could I can attest to that. I, you know, I have some friends who, who have passed or, or, or friends who I don't talk to. I don't even know if they're alive or not. They're off the grid somehow, some way. I suspect it's probably that. But, yeah, things go that, that route. So when you decided to, all right, you're, you're at this place. I have no one to turn to. Not knowing about God. Knowing there is something going on with it. But all of a sudden... What's that moment? Bring me back to like, well, like literally, if you can remember. I don't know what yeah, I can fog or days you were yeah, in. No, I can. That moment when you looked and said, I need to talk to something or somebody. Did you walk into a church? Did you? Was there a mentor? Was there a person? Well, this is when I was, um, I was living in Southern California. I was bouncing back and forth from New York, kind of the L.A. area, San Diego area. And um, I was a union bricklayer at the time. And they only paid for a one rehab a year, rehabilitation program with this 12 steps and all that. So I used that up, so I got introduced to this uh, organization called Teen Challenge. And Teen Challenge is a faith-based recovery program. It's 12 months long, and they were the only ones that would take me without $50,000 of insurance money. How many people abandoned you during that time? Do you feel abandoned by? None. Family? I don't feel abandoned at all because, you know, I take responsibilities for was, my own. I was going to say, isn't it funny when you, when you hit that low – People do abandon you during the low, but really it's tough low. Or because if they come back afterwards, that means they knew what you were going through and you had to earn it yourself. And that's it. I'm, I'm and I'm still very much to this uh, mindset is that I'm all about giving a hand up and not a handout. Yeah. And there's a big difference, man. I, I got so many handouts from my family, and and it, especially in the addiction world, that you tend to hurt the ones you love the most. And and it's such a beast addiction. And whether it's addicted to uh, erratically spending money, drugs, alcohol, overeating, undereating, whatever it is. The addictive um, behavior is tough. It is. Do you carry the burden? Do you, do you, have, do you have guilt? No, absolutely not. Going, and, you know, going past all this. Do you, no. Sometimes do you, do, you, do you think back and say, man, I, I hurt this individual. I didn't mean to. You know, like sometimes you, you no. know, like when you're addicted, you, you don't really – you, but you're so selfish. But you don't oh, yeah. really – the intention wasn't to wake up that day and say, I'm going to hurt this person. Just through the addiction process, you end up hurting people. Right, and I'm going to say that I definitely not anymore because, you know what, uh, you know, when I was in Teen Challenge, it was a chapel service. I walked into this chapel service, and here's about 30 to 40 um, neo-Nazi, skinheads, La M.A. Mexican gangsters, I mean, with teardrop tattoos, like straight murderers. Those spider webs. I mean, you name it, like all tatted up. And you know what? And they were literally, you know, singing in the church service, and some were just at the altar, kind of crying, asking God for forgiveness. And if, when I first walked in, I really thought they were brainwashed out of their minds. That was the first thought that came to my mind. Then I started thinking, um, you know, maybe they know something I don't know because I've been through eight rehab programs, ten detox programs. Can quote you the AA book, Inside Out, mm -hmm. uh, psychologist, psychotherapist, anti abuse, you name it. I tried. Almost everything the world had to offer. Sure, but it was. It just took that one moment in the presence of God and asking Him to forgive me and telling Him, "Listen, you know, I, I, during that worship service we were singing and all, I said, God, you know, if you're if you're real, I need you now. Yeah. I don't need you two weeks from now. I don't need you twelve steps from now. I need you now. <laughs> I need you now, man. And I'm I'm gonna come out with stories that I have as well yeah. throughout my throughout my life and things. I'm gonna go back to when I was in my twenties as well. But yeah, it's it's an amazing feeling when you find whatever it is. Now this isn't a religious based show or anything to that extent. We're just saying it's a big part of Jeff's life. And Jeff as as well as Jack, Chris Hanks, Rich Suggs, a bunch of people brought God into into my life. So it's 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 an important part. Kelly, I can see that through her. So Karen Huff. There's mm -hmm. several people who inspired me through it. 
um, with things. But yeah, the stories, the stories are just so unique. I knew that was one part of your story. Now, from that, from that stage of where you're at, I see and society sees you have a giving heart tremendously. That's why I, I question, is it guilt-based giving or is it just because you just say or you just know in your mind the giving part of it is just you giving thanks? Like, like give, me, give me a background on the giving because you give a lot. You give yeah. a lot of time. You give a lot in just live streams. You give a lot with your laughs. You give a lot in so many ways yeah. you don't even realize that you inspire and that, and that you're giving back plus the dollars that you give, things that you help. The, the camps, the church, all this kind of stuff. So what, what is it? That's that's why I asked about the guilt because right. a lot of times people give back and they're guilty. It's the wrong motive. You're, you know what I mean? You're, like, you're, you're given as a... So like, where's the intention? The, the intention is simply like I really believe that I'm alive today because of God's gift to me. Like, you know, I was suicidal twice. Like, you name it. I should have been dead. You know, and, you know, looking How back, is that God that? did so many miracles to save my butt. When I was yeah. far from him. Oh, man. So, I, I can feel it. Yeah, I can feel that yeah, right now. Man, I got it, some chills. It gets going. me emotional. It gets me yeah. emotional. But, it's, but it is because I, I do look back now on a lot of stuff in my life, and it's like, wow, I cannot believe I needed to go through right. things. I needed that. But where I'm at, because people only see you. They only see you now. Right. Or they'll catch you on a live stream, or they'll, they'll see the Jeffrey out in the suit looking good, hanging out with his family, going to the beach, going fishing. Right. There's so much more that led to this. You know, to where you have to be. I mean, you literally were their age. Right. It's Christian and Jack here behind the camera going through this. These guys won't have to, hopefully. Right. They don't even you know to, to even fathom what that is or, or, or fighting overseas or something to that effect and having to kill somebody in war. Right. Hopefully they never have to experience that right. throughout, their, throughout their lives. But, um, you know, so, so the, yeah, the giving heart. So, you know, anyhow, so I really believe that was God's gift to me, my second life. It was his present to me. Like, you know, Jeff, here's a second chance. Here's your present. And my gift back to God, my present back to him, is what I do with my life. Mm. Every day I make a conscious decision when I wake up. I choose emotions. Emo I never <laughs> – my wife, <laughs> Vanessa, if you're watching, she always calls me emotionally constipated. <laughs> oh, there's my beautiful wife there. So I'm emotionally constipated, meaning that you know, if I feel down, if I feel depressed, if I, I, I don't soak in that. I never do. I make a conscious decision and say, I remember where I came from. But how's constipation? Is that holding it in? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess to a certain degree because I don't give it the power of speaking it. Oh, so she don't let it come out of you in, in, exactly. in, that, in that negative way. You just, yeah, I just bottle it up and I flush it. And it comes out. <laughs> gotcha. The constipation releases. So, but, did you, so okay, let's, let's, let's talk about your wife. Did you, did you meet her? When did you, when did, when did you meet her? I met her in, the, in, in Brooklyn. And when she was 21, we were both serving at a wonderful uh, children's ministry so, so out this, in Brooklyn. This was after. Oh, yeah. This, this Vanessa was, did this not was, know me. So she wasn't part of before of, of Jesus. Your process. Like I say, my wife has been pro as part of my growth. It's a tremendous story. Right. Hopefully she's going to be sitting here one of these days, and we're going to have a great, oh, she, a great conversation. She's definitely part of my growth still. So my, I'm wondering. Well, yeah. So she's on <laughs> me, but wasn't there during when you, you know, oh, no. the she homeless, you enter a church. I always you, called the old man. And, like, the way, the way I used to be is, like, you know, if you had something I wanted— I would find a way to get it. Yeah. Plain and simple. You know, I would I would connive, cheat, whatever it was to get it. But now, you know, it's totally different. Right. Where I always want to come giving. Yeah. You know, and it's just that self fulfillment of wanting to always add value to people, man. And it's very reciprocal how the world works and how God blesses me. There is a there is a selfish aspect to that though, we think about it. You know what I mean? There is because giving you know that feeling, the goosebump moment? Yeah. Is what I call it. It's an amazing well, feeling. Here's the thing. If you're going to be addicted to something, man, <laughs> you might as well be di addicted to giving, yeah. you know, or helping people and, you know. Hosting and shows, doing yeah, whatever you got to do. Exactly. And definitely one of the things that I'm addicted to still um, is success. <laughs> like, I can see that because it's, uh, you have a you have a very unique drive. And that's, that's why Jeffrey's on, on the show here today. He has a very unique drive um, towards giving back. Your story behind it. I mean, I wish we had hours we'd go into it, but unfortunately right. we, we don't. But I wanted to talk, talk a little bit about your story and all that kind of stuff. Let's, let me ask a couple of, of other questions, not so heavy. Give me a little bit of, of your morning routine, just real brief, before oh. you, you suit up and you get out. Give me, give me your routine. Um, First thing, when you get out of bed, what do you what do? You do? Before my feet hit the ground? Well, and usually uh, I wake up at <laughs> 5 o'clock. First thing I do is I thank God. I thank God that I'm awake. I thank him for my wife sleeping next to me. I thank him for my kids. Do you know something that you do that, and I think I told you before, you send out 
a scripture or, or something that goes out every day, it's emailed to me. And, yep. I, and I literally read yours in front of the guys here just before you got here. It was in Proverbs, right? It comes in my email. Yeah, Every day. I don't know why I'm linked to it. Because we're but friends on that Bible app, so when I highlight something, I, apparently it sends an email because I was sitting with Vanessa and I was highlighting and all of a sudden her, her oh, phone wonderful. started that, going off. That in itself inspires. That that gets me reading. At least you know right. I can I can do that every single day. So, so okay, I so get you, up, give thanks, and you know I also you know in the last couple of months I've dedicated to getting healthy. You know, I so I, I go to the gym uh, with the elite training and fitness with Carrie. She's amazing. Great. Carrie's going to be a guest on. Yeah, with you. yeah. Gonna... I was talking to her this morning. Carrie, if you're watching or you watch us on another play or whatever, we're going to need. I got a picture of you. We're going to get a picture of him. I'm going to set you guys up like a boxing thing, like oh, side oh, by side. Oh, oh gosh. The, the weigh-ins, you and Carrie, you guys sit here and kind of the Listen. trainer versus the under the underling. <laughs> And I made the mistake this morning with Carrie because I was talking smack because she's kind of changed her schedule a little bit, so she was training us this morning. I said, Carrie, man, I think you're pretty soft compared to the other trainers. <laughs> she yeah. kicked my butt today. We did yeah, legs. She, but, um, all right, so, 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 you're, so you're getting healthy? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and this is part of it, man. I want to be here for my kids. I know a healthier me is going to be a healthier marriage, a healthier father, a healthier businessman, a healthier... You no idea. I mean, I, I, I've lost over... Well, between twice, say it's like twenty six pounds, like like twenty five yeah. pounds, just just, you, just myself. You definitely see your and, face, and the way that I feel, it's tremendous. Do you miss it's, the cannolis I used to bring by? Though? No, no, come on, bro, Christian, a, Christian, a, a Christian misses Christian the cannolis occasionally. But you know what? I honestly, once you get off the sugar, it's like getting off drugs or whatever it is. You yeah. just go, the taste goes away. Like right. it's not a true. I think it's not a true addiction to your body. I, I wasn't. I don't know what I was addicted to when I was on sugar, but I don't yeah. miss it. I don't miss the carbohydrate. It was a habit. That's, I mean, it was a habit that you broke. And Why is your it, tongue yellow? I don't know. <laughs> We're live. What did you put in this <laughs> coffee? <laughs> We're live. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, his tongue turned yellow. Now it's probably from like, the coffee. But I I feel better. I don't I don't crave it. Now, if you put a little chocolate in front of me, I'm going to enjoy or it. Or Zeppelin? <laughs> Jody had some at, at, at Boca. I, I, oh, I, I, I tasted it. You I sent me a picture of this caramel cheesecake. <laughs> but I, I didn't have. Oh, didn't have it. I didn't have any cheesecake, but I had a little bit of the the cream, the de la creme on the side. I did taste a little bit of that. Let me tell you what this guy does. Almost every day, he's texting me pictures of food, <laughs> hamburgers, donuts. <laughs> That's what he does. Really encouraging, right? I'm testing you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I'm thank testing. you. I'm thank making you sure you that. stay focused. Oh, uh, I I do laugh every time I do. I'm I'm chuckling, but it, it's part of the, it's part of the humor with it. But you know, so okay, so your morning routine is that get up, you're thankful, yeah, um, workouts. I do my proverb a day out of my Bible, and my old pastor from Brooklyn used to say that a proverb a day helps keep stupidity away. Mm -hmm. And so I still do that same routines, you know, you know, over the course of 15, 20 years, keep doing the same things, you know, and mm -hmm. it's really being brilliant in the basics, I call it. It's the simple things in life that you Patience. have to, yeah, you have to master these simple things, man. Patience, man. You know, but then after that, I, you know, um, come home and, and, and take my time. I put a, uh, some type of uh, YouTube inspirational link on. You've been sharing some yeah, of them Yeah, like Billy well. Brooks and just kind of get pumped for the day, man. Those get me fired up. Yeah, that's I'm what like I'm saying. Really. Like, and. You know, I don't know about, about you particularly, but I, I, I work in a very negative environment sometimes. Not not with the, our, Marketing our advisors. Marketing is. Marketing but is, though. It's because I'm always hearing from my clients the hardships they're going through. And people are passing away. I'm there walking them through the process. So it's yeah. always this constant, like, you know, right. this heaviness. So in order to kind of pump myself up, boom. I understand. Go get her done. And then, you know, take my time getting suited up and putting my... My gear on and making sure everything is iron got pressed. Your, got your Superman suit little on. Pocket square rocking, lapel pin. Love it. Let's get to the last question. Yeah. You had a hundred bucks recently. What was the best item that you spent a hundred or less on in the past twelve months? Oh, that's that's a good one. Oh, Can't oh go last over. twelve months? Last twelve months we'll go back. You wanna go back a couple of weeks? Whatever the best thing that you spent a hundred bucks on or less. Oh, man. I'm going to say it was a steak dinner. <laughs> We're at. Throw them some props. Prime, man. Prime. Prime. And actually, Vanessa and I coined a term at Prime with Sam, the general manager over there in Port Charlotte. We're called Primers. Primers. Boom! You know what they should do? They should have our own knives engraved and keep it in like a locker. And you bro. come in, hi I'm, hi, I'm a primer, and you get your seat, you get your steak knife. I mean, bro, we're there like once Dennis, a week. Dennis, Valentino, if you, do, if you are watching... I'm going to text you this. That would be a brilliant Primers. Idea. I'm like... Now, would you pay per month to be a primer? 
Oh, I, we, tempered, without a ten percent off dinners, you get your own steak knife and gravy. I would so do it because I love that place. I'm always bringing people there. It's high quality. It's locally owned. The primer prime, like the you prime, know, the primer. The, the, the head prime. chef there, Mike, is one of my clients. Big Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You I know, great much. guy, great family, just an awesome local business. And something that's done well, I mean, I can jump in and support. Prime is good, isn't it? Yeah. I, know. I, I can't do nothing but post that about that. I just, I love that place. The bread pudding made out of the, the, the popovers? It's Holy fun. cow, it's mind-blowing. Enough about Prime. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's it, man. Episode is done. Take your last sip. Is that got, quick? You got one more sip. That's it. We are done today. One more sip. I know. He's showing off FTB mug. Froelich, Gordon, and Beeson. Is that it? Yeah, you got it right, bro. He's looking at it. I know, I know. We just sat with Jay yesterday, Jay uh, Gordon. Great, yeah. great, great attorney. Love to get him on, on, on the show here. I'd I love wanna, to sit down and chat with him too. I want to chat with him. Yeah, he's a he's a fantastic guy. The other two attorneys, I mean, they they're, they're they're very busy every time that we do go there. So I don't really get a chance to see them and get to know them on the on the way that I've got to right. know, know Jay. But uh, he's an average. Uh, he's a, he's a runner. He runs in the morning. He's a family guy. I got a chance to meet his daughter. And, you know, just he's a good guy. A good guy. Whereas the stigma around lawyers are always Wah. just like yeah. squared away, man. Right. So, so thank other. you so much, man. I gotta say, you inspire a lot of people, bro. I'm, I'm serious. If you just keep doing it, keep charging ahead, keep doing that. You're, yeah, fuck it, I'm getting emotional. But you inspire more than you can ever, ever freaking imagine. Just keep on doing it. Thanks cool. so much for being here. Thanks, bro. Appreciate thank you so much for joining us on Chatter, Southwest Florida. Our next guest next week is Jen Collins. She's gonna bring the spirit, the spunk, some funny stuff, and she asked for a bottle of wine. Whoa. So we don't know what we're in store for. So next week, 9.30 a.m., Jen Collins is going to be sitting right here. So keep that seat clean. And thank you so much for joining us on Chatter, Southwest Florida.